Welcome guys to my new 2022 BRZ. Just clocked 812 miles on the odometer and we are going for our very first canyon run. I'm not gonna be pushing it too much. The car's still being broken in as we follow Sago here in his uh, white BRZ. But I wanted to do a casual drive and take this opportunity to talk about five things that already annoy me about this car. And by the way, overall, I am loving this car and I will be tracking it in less than two weeks. But it's definitely good to mention if some of you guys and gals are looking to purchase a new BRZ. There are a few caveats you should be aware of before you spend your thirty to forty thousand dollars, depending on how much markup you end up paying. Now, the very first thing that I don't like about the BRZ is the amount of road noise inside the cabin. And look, this is a 2,800 pound car. You can't expect it to be super quiet on the inside. There is gonna be a certain level of road noise you should expect for any car that weighs sub 3,000 pounds. And I would gladly trade that little bit of daily drivability and comfort for the light weight of this car any day. Ultimately, this is a sports car first and a comfortable daily second. So, minor complaint. But the second thing I don't particularly like about the BRZ is the sound system. Kind of minor complaint because this is, after all, a $30,000 car. You can't expect it to have an amazing, super high-end sound system, but the one in this car is honestly awful. When you do turn the volume up, it does sound pretty tinny. There's not a whole lot of depth to the bass, to the mid-range, and the treble is not exactly clear or crisp, but when you combine those first two things, the high road noise plus the weak sound system, it just means that when you're cruising at freeway speeds like 70 plus miles an hour, it is pretty hard to hear your music. And there is a little bit of that tire and road noise that makes it just that little bit harder to enjoy whatever you're trying to listen to. The first two things are relatively minor complaints, especially considering the price point of the car. Now the third thing I don't like about the BRZ has to do with ergonomics of the interior. So as you know, this car comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's not wireless. Since you do have to keep your phone plugged in to make it work, unless you have an aftermarket dedicated phone mount, the only logical place it seems to put your phone is back here in these cup holders. As you can see, these cup holders are mounted way back behind your elbow. What I don't understand is why Subaru and Toyota didn't design a small little cubby hole right behind the shifter. It just would make so much more sense to be able to drop your phone in there, even if it doesn't have wireless charging, not a big deal, but just a little bit of cubby space to put your phone. And I actually tried just wedging my phone between the base of the shifter and this plastic piece of the center console. But then when you go to shift into third gear or first gear or fifth gear, if you have a wider phone like my Pixel 6, um, it will actually jam the phone and you don't wanna damage your phone by shifting gears. Luckily, Android Auto in this car does work very well. So, I mean, you really shouldn't be using your phone while you're driving anyway, but in the off chance that you do, it is a little bit annoying to have to reach back there. Now, the fourth thing I don't like about the Subaru BRZ is also ergonomics related. The seating position and the seat comfort are both very good. I was able to do a 600 plus mile road trip with my buddy Oleg in this car, no problem. However, my elbows did take a little bit of a beating. If you notice on the right here, there is an elbow rest, but they cut this part out, presumably so you can put your phone or your wallet or something. And while that is a nice little benefit, your elbow sometimes tries to slip into that crack. And this actual elbow rest right here is pretty firm. So it's not the easiest on your left elbow. And then on the right side, like I said, because you have to put your phone in the cup holders, you have to keep that compartment open. There basically is no place to put your elbow except this hard piece of plastic right behind the e-brake. If you're just trying to sit back and relax and cruise like this, you do notice that your elbows just can never quite find a comfortable position. And that brings me to the fifth and final thing I already dislike about my BRZ. And this is by far the thing that annoys me the most, being someone who's more interested in the driving dynamics of the car. The amount of rev hang I have to deal with in this car is both surprising and incredibly annoying. Um, so what do I mean by rev hang? Well, it's a common thing in modern turbo cars, like your hot hatches of the world. When you clutch in and get ready to shift to that next gear, often the RPM will hang 
at a constant amount or take longer than it should to drop back down to give you that perfect rev matched upshift. This car has rev hang in abundance, even though it's a naturally aspirated engine. I don't understand why it has it. It might be emissions related, that's my best guess, but it is incredibly annoying. Now, when I'm driving more aggressively, as you see there, it's not really as much of an issue, but around town at lower RPM, I have to clutch in and purposely wait like an extra second or two for the revs to start falling before I clutch back out in the next gear up. Now, there are a few other minor things that I don't love about the BRZ, but I think these things probably don't apply as broadly to all BRZ owners or potential owners as much as those first five. For those of you who like to modify your cars, if you wanna get aftermarket wheels with a nice flush fitment, the front clearance is about the same as the previous generation BRZ, but the rears, you actually get a lot less clearance due to the design of that lip right at the wheel well. There's an extra little trim piece along the back of the wheel well at first you think oh that's just like a design element right but if you actually take the wheel off and look at the inside of the fender you really don't have much clearance at all to roll your fenders if you want to have flush wheel fitment this issue might be like more well documented in terms of how to resolve it later on but as of right now, it looks like it is quite a pain. I know you can run like an 18 by nine all around with say like a plus 50 or plus 55 offset, but that will not give you that ideal kind of flush fitment that most people would want in the rear of the car at least. I don't know why they didn't just flare the fender a little bit more so that it can just be a single piece, but hey, just something we have to deal with. Those are pretty much the only things I don't like about the BRZ so far after 821 miles here. And if you'll notice, they're all relatively minor in my opinion. And the thing that bothered me the most being the rev hang, I am pretty sure can be fixed by the aftermarket. I will be tracking my BRZ soon on January 2nd at Thunder Hill Raceway. And rest assured, I will give you my full driving impressions of the car in terms of how the car drives at the limit at that time. I'll try to push that video out after the track day as soon as I can. The car will be tracked bone stock, literally just brake pads and fluid. That's really all you need. In fact, Sega will be tracking his identical car, so we'll get some really fun lead follow footage. We both went with the Power Stop track day spec pads. They're cheap. I mean, a full set front and rear on Amazon was only around $200. Eventually, you know, I will go big brake kit and that's when I'll be willing to spend more on some legit pads. But even if these pads hold up for, you know, four or five track days, that'll be good enough, especially for the price. So let me know what you guys think about my initial few complaints with the BRZ. If you guys are BRZ owners and there are other things you noticed, um, let me know. Maybe I just haven't spent enough time with the car to really be that annoyed with it yet. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you have not subscribed already, please do so, and I'll see you in the next one.